Space lovers, you want to come on an adventure? I'm Brandy, the mom behind Aunt Bindi's bookshelf, and today I'm taking you to one of my favorite places in and out of this world. We're going to go to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science's newly revamped Space Odyssey. The Space Odyssey exhibit is included in the price of admission to DMNS, and man, it's worth the price all by itself. Covering around 9,000 square feet of space, this exhibit has something for everyone, from tiny toddlers in the AstroTots area to those willing to go on their very own mission in the virtual reality simulator. All ages are gonna have a great time here. The first thing you see when entering the exhibit is a Mars rover. Take some time to explore the rover because you're gonna get a chance to be a remote pilot for the rover down in the life-size model of a Mars base. While you're waiting for your turn to pilot the rover, check out some of the other hands-on exhibits. You can color images of space, feel the rumble of an actual space launch. We have or create your own rocket. There is so much to do in this corner of the exhibit. Another area you'll definitely want to dedicate some time to is the volunteer run exhibit booths. These are frequently changed and might be different than what you saw last time you visited. While we were visiting, we got to learn about spectral signatures and how scientists can tell what kinds of gases different planets contain, even though we've never actually set foot on them. When we finished there, we went over to try our hand at a robot arm challenge. I saw all kinds of people doing this from like four year olds all the way up to their grandparents. And let's just say some were better at it than others. Oof. As you move toward the back of the exhibit, you'll see signs for the Gates Planetarium. There are five different shows available at the planetarium right now, including a Sesame Street show specifically designed for kids three to eight. You do need to buy a separate ticket if you wanna to go to a show in the planetarium, so keep that in mind. Because all the signage in that back corner indicates you're moving toward the planetarium, you might think that's all that's back there and you might just move on if you aren't going to a show. Don't. One of the coolest parts of the exhibit is back there. Tucked back in a corner is where you'll find the fantasy spaceship. You enter the spaceship through a starlit hallway. According to DMNS, there are over 11,000 lights filling in for stars in here. Once you've moved through space, you find yourself in the fantasy spaceship. The ship gives you the chance to be the captain and run the controls. Looking through a massive window, weirdly reminiscent of Star Trek, you can pilot the ship. And if you follow directions and are patient enough to charge all the way up, you can put the ship into hyperdrive and jump to light speed. This is an imaginative person's dream in here. There are all kinds of things to touch and play with. There are things to climb and exhibits that interact with you. There's even a huge multiplayer Simon game you can partake in. Plan to spend some time playing in here. Let your kids explore and touch and imagine to their heart's content. This really is one of my favorite parts of the whole exhibit. If you have littles, like under five, you can turn them loose in the AstroTots area. I don't have very much footage in here because I try to be really conscientious of not filming other people's kids, but they have climbing stuff, a few sensory activities and general tot spot types type stuff. They used to have costumes and toys in this area, but I didn't see any during our visit. I might have just missed them or they might have been removed as precaution during the pandemic. Either way, the spot is cool and a great spot to unwind if your kids are getting a little antsy. Once kids are done playing in the AstroTots area, take them over to another set of exhibits they can touch and feel and smell. I don't think I've ever had the chance to experience what different planets smell like. I can't say they were all great, but it was definitely interesting. And honestly, when's the next time you're gonna have a chance to smell Venus? You can also use this super cool machine to create an impact crater on the moon. Once your crater is created, you can watch slow motion footage of your shot. If you wanna try this experiment at home, admittedly with way less cool launching ex equipment, I did a whole video on creating moon craters and why there are craters on the moon, but not on Earth. I'll link it in the description. And finally, if you haven't gotten enough space yet, you can go on the virtual reality transporter. It costs a few extra dollars. I think it was around seven. You have to be 42 inches tall. You can't be pregnant or have back problems. 
If you meet all the requirements, it's a fun idea. Don a pair of VR goggles and then sit on a moving platform. Other guests can watch what you're seeing as you see it, which is a fun twist. My guys said they probably wouldn't do it again, but we have VR goggles at home, so the novelty is kind of gone for them. If you love VR or haven't experienced it yet, give this one a try. It really is fun. There is no way I could possibly cover all the things you can see and do in this exhibit, especially since it's always changing. If you're in the Denver area, either on vacation or on a day trip, I can't recommend Denver Museum of Nature and Science highly enough. Heck, this is only one exhibit. There are so many more. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because I'll be covering all the exhibits virtual field trip style as time goes on. And if you want to see more of our virtual visits around the Denver area, check out a few places we've already gone. If you want to suggest places to visit, shoot me a comment. I'm always looking for ideas. See you soon.